2000 F250. This is with the 5.4 Triton V8. Uh, we're doing the front brakes on this thing. If you're going to order them on eBay, make sure that you put in two-wheel drive, 2WD, when you're putting it into the search. Don't be an idiot like me. I put in 2000 F250 uh, front wheel drive. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, I just put in uh, front brakes and I ordered them and the rotors that came in were actually for a four wheel drive truck. They're the cheapest ones. You're not gonna get the cheapest ones. You're gonna spend 150 to $200 on a set of uh, rotors and brake pads off of eBay or other websites. I ended up having to rush into town because it's now Sunday night. I go to work tomorrow morning. Ah, uh, let's get to this. Let me get down here real quick. Uh, first, you take your wheel off. Of course, I'm, I'm doing one side at a time, so I jacked it up. It's all on Mountain Dew. Uh, let's see. Don't be an idiot, because like I said, uh, this whole thing comes off. This is all one, one unit right here. All the way. You have to pull the, you have to pull this cap off, and you're gonna get a nut, and, and all this. And that. I'm gonna show you right now. Uh, the end of this video. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna check you out on the other side. This is the other side. This is the passenger side. Uh, I'm working on the driver's side currently right now in the video, but I need to throw this right here in the middle of the video. How to change the brake pads. You're gonna wanna do it this way because this is the easiest way. I ended up screwing up over there and it took me an hour extra time to get this done. On the back side of this, the where the little squinchies are there's one on the top one on the bottom versus the one that takes the whole caliper off the next one in is the one that just takes the pads out okay that's a, a 17 millimeter and it, it's gonna screw out it's gonna be locked in there pretty good so you're gonna need a breaker bar or a really good beat or really strong hands so anyway undo those and then you can actually pull your brake pads out okay that's what you're gonna wanna do first, is you're gonna wanna get this off of there. All right, this is something else I learned. I'm trying to get it to focus. This is something else I learned. You're, if you're changing your rotors, don't worry about scratching them. Wedge it in right here between the rotor and the pad. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna wedge this out this way. And what you're doing is you're pushing everything and opening it up. Okay. You just compressed your uh, your uh, caliper, and you made this so that it's easy to pull out. We're going to compress that a little bit more than what it is before we put the new ones in. So we're going to set this on a block so that it's not hanging on your line. Okay. We're going to take uh, the old pad, which is one of these, and we're going to spin it around, and we're going to lay it on this, and we're going to put a C-clamp on this and we're gonna squish these all the way in as far as they can. The reason we're doing it this way is because these right here are a pain in the butt to take out, okay? That's why we're doing it this way. Ta-da! And this leaves everything else on there. But in order to change the caliper, we're gonna end up taking these other ones off. But this makes changing the pads easier because these, you can't get them back on there to save your freaking life if it's set up the other way. So let's go ahead and get these taken off. We're just gonna pop that out like that and pop this one out like that. Okay, these don't go in any particular order as long as the nipples are facing each other. Uh, we're gonna pull this this way. Say so flip it and just mm, give it a yank and it comes out. And you're doing the same thing with the other side and you get it pulled out okay so now that's done we're gonna put this one on here mm. these aren't bad but I'm gonna change them anyway because I'm putting new rotors on so we're gonna take a c-clamp and we're gonna squish this in, in case you were wondering this is a c-clamp <laughs> 
I'm gonna put it on there and squeeze it. You want this positioned in center. So you're pushing the, there's two of them. So you want it, it's centered. So it's pushing them both in at the same time, even level and right in the middle of them. And then squish them down as far as they'll go. And then see, now they're pushed in. Okay. Now what this is going to do, what you're doing is you're act, is you're literally pushing the fluid back through the line backwards. Okay. So now we've got it done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the new pads in here. And we're going to make sure that on the new pads on the back side right here where this contact is, you're going to rub a little bit of grease. All I did is just, just a glaze. I mean, there's really not a whole lot on there. What this is going to stop is it's going to stop your brakes from rubbing on these and vibrating and making a little bit of chatter. Also in these, it's not going to be making these rub and chatter a little bit. So it'll get rid of some of what your potential squeaks can be. So now I'm just going to stick these back in the spots where they're supposed to be. All right, see here? I gently put them back in there, but I also spread them out to the edge of where it can be in there. On the top, bottom, and on the inside one, I spread it out. That way when this goes on there, I'll be able to slide it on there. And then when I pull the whole thing off, it'll come right off of this and it'll already be spread out. I'm going to go ahead and get those springs. There they are. This is the hard part the way I did it before. So now you're just going to find these little holes that are right here. A little hole there and a little hole on this side. Sorry about the blurriness. And then I'm going to do it. There's one more on the bottom side. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. But I'm putting that one there. And then one more on this one and just kind of squeeze them in there. There. Now it's back the way it was. I'm going to do my best to slide this over that and get the bolt on the back side on the top first. All right. You are going to have to squeeze them in a bit. I got the top bolt on. Now I'm working on getting the bottom bolt in. I'm going to put these in. I'm going to tighten them up with a wrench real quick without having to use power tools. And then I'm going to pull this bigger bolt out, which I figured out that bigger bolt was, I think it was 13 sixteenths. I can't remember. Yeah, 13 sixteenths on the bolt that pulls the whole caliper off. That's what I'm going to do next. All right, now that you got your caliper off, like I say, you know, now your new pads are already in there. So you don't have to worry about that now. And they're spaced out where it needs to be. Now you can take your bigger impact and you can tighten those up that hold the whole pad assembly together. You can tighten those up right now that it's out and you can turn it around it makes it easier and there now your front brakes are complete and we'll go back to our regular schedule program and i'll show you the ending when i get done uh, there is uh two bolts i believe they are um let me see real quick uh 13 <laughs> Woo, scared the hell out of me i hit that um there it is, 13 sixteenths, if it'll freaking focus. Anyway, 13 sixteenths, that's what that is. Uh, 13 sixteenths, there's two bolts. Uh, you'll find them the farthest one to the top and the farthest one to the bottom. 13 sixteenths to pull that off. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna tap it on the edge right here. It's gonna be real, real, real easy. You tap it like that. And then you're gonna turn it and you tap it a little bit like that. Some of you might have a tool that'll do this for you. And you can pull it off of there. You don't wanna beat the hell out of it too hard. You wanna just go around it easy. Otherwise, you will dent it. Yeah, see? Real easy and it'll fall right off. So you pull your, that's basically your dust cap. Then you're gonna have a quarter pin. You're gonna have the keeper nut. That comes off and then you're going to have a castle nut behind that that you're going to take that off first. Well, actually, it's not a castle nut. This actually goes right through the pin in the center, right through the uh, 
spindle uh, and then you'll have a nut that'll come off there'll be a washer and then there'll be your bearings all right first thing is you're gonna pull that one off you're gonna straighten it out and then pull it out and then you're gonna pull this one off that's gonna come out and then this shouldn't should be almost just a little over finger tight okay so we're gonna pull this off and we're gonna set these up so that they're not in dirt and then you're gonna have your washer ah, not in dirt just so throw it in the dirt instead don't set it in the dirt throw it in the dirt and then that is the bearing basically now you're gonna grab this whole thing and you're gonna yank it off of there all right like I said the whole thing pops out bearing comes off comes out of the front very easily do not unless you have a repacker or a way of packing the bearings do not try to strip all the grease out of these as long as it was rolling smooth it didn't sound gritty your grease is fine you're gonna to want to add grease to the outside of this nice and and thick so then that way it covers in back into the new one do not try not to reuse the the, the grease that's in here because the grease that's in there is dirty it may have small metal shavings and whatnot and it's just going to continue to ruin everything that's here you are going to want to clean off your spindle to prep it for everything new that's going into it All right. another thing that you don't want to be like me I didn't buy the rear seals to the hubs so I was sitting here very nervous and wondering what am I gonna do if you're me right now you can try this if not and it doesn't work out right you're gonna have to go buy new rear seals okay a rear seal is this thing right here okay I'm gonna show you where this goes right here what there's a dragonfly yeah. that is Oh my Heard god. That is massive. That's a two by four he's on the side of. His wingspan is at least six inches. Okay. Yeah, and my wife is here helping me. <laughs> um, all right, so what I did, this is in here like this okay it's in here like this and it has this bearing right behind it like so okay and I was feeling it it actually bumps up against some of this rubber here and with it in there it's like that there's no way to pull it out of there so I turned the whole thing upside down and I took uh, where's my long, long screwdriver? I don't even know where my... Oh, there it is. I took this screwdriver, which actually has a little bit of a hammer section in the back so I can hit it a little bit, and I put it in from the other side. Say this is facing in the other direction now. And I gave it a little tap here, and a little tap here, and a little tap here, here, and I kept going around, and it actually fell out. I didn't put massive force on it. So... If you get lucky like me and the gods are on your side then it'll work and I'm gonna be able to put this one back onto the new spindle so now it's new spindle time let's get this out of the way and do that all right here's a new one we're gonna put a glob here and we're just gonna run it around and we're gonna pack it into the back edge of this and then we're gonna run some around the inside edge of where that shiny pieces from there to there okay and that's what we're gonna pack in right there uh, we're not gonna really have to we don't have to fill the gap in from here to the other side but you are gonna want to put a little excess on the back side all right next thing okay I I coated the outside of the bearing with grease I coated the uh, inside of it around it uh, past it now I went and I put the seal on there the same way it came out I put it back on there and then I went all the way around it a couple little taps here a couple little taps there 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 on the metal not the rubber 
and I kept going around and around and around until I can put my finger on here and it's all flush all the way around it feels good okay you know, finger this thing as good as you can to make sure that it's all even and then you're gonna lube it up real good this is where you get all your practice in brothers right here this this is what makes you a good man but anyway right around the edge I went ahead and I filled in the edge here I filled in the edge there that way I have plenty of grease all the way and I'm having too much fun with this I'm telling you right now <laughs> what <laughs> ah! my, my phone is getting greasy it's slippery right now <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to clean this off because nobody likes red gunk on your fingers. One thing you want to be careful of, okay, when you pick this up and slide it on, you're going to hear it like give it a little kiss because of all the grease. If your truck is not level, you will not be able to let go of this because of how greasy it is and slippery. This thing can slide right back out on you, land on your leg, land on your hand. So be very careful when you put this up that when you let go of it, it's not going to slide off. You want to be very careful about this. See, this one already already wants to slide off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push some grease into this hole here and onto my bearing. And I'm going to push that bearing in there. I'm going to grab the washer, the nut, and get that on there. And then we're going to pack it again with grease. We're going to put a little bit of grease in the dust cap. I like greasing it up because I don't want to have to worry about my hub burning up out there on the road. All right. I put a big glob of grease on this side, big glob, and then I evened it out. I, then I took my bearing and I put grease all around it again, pushed that into there, pushed the uh, washer, and then I put the nut on there. Now remember how easy it was for me to undo that with my hand? and I had not loosened it. This is not an over tightening kind of a thing. When you get the grease in there, you might want to do a quarter to half a turn and then back out. Any more and you can actually damage your bearings. You can damage your spindle. You don't want this. When you turn this, you want it to be able to spin. You don't want it to just stop. If it stops right away, you have tightened it too much or your bearings are bad. One of the two. There. I'm just wiping off the outside edges. Getting that done. And that's about all you're going to want to do with this. Like I said, I'm, I might go ahead and tighten that down just a hair by hand a little bit. And then once you get it exactly where you want it, then, you, then you're going to go ahead and put this on there like that. You're going to find the hole where that carter pin goes through and then you're gonna bang that dust cap on all right like I said I, I couldn't even get a quarter turn out of it I did a quarter turn and it started dragging on this I spun it and it was like slowing down pretty fast so I backed it out just a hair it's basically just barely over finger tight I put this uh, this uh, keeper right in the spot where the holes on top right between them then you drop your carter pin in there and then this one, I split it going this way and this way. Some people just bend them up over the top. I prefer going this way because that way it can't turn and pull out. It can't spin. Nothing. It's going to stay right where it's at. I reused the one that was here because it wasn't bad off. Uh, if it's bad off or you break, you need to put a new carter pin. Don't use a nail. Don't use a piece of metal. Go and buy you a carter pin. It's aluminum. It's not going to rust. Yeah. Okay. Just get you a new one. They're not that much. You can get, pick up a whole box of them at Harbor Freight for like six bucks. And I didn't use hardly any of the grease out of this. There wasn't, you know, I used quite a bit, but not as much as you would think. There. That's how much I used. All right. So now all we do is uh, we're gonna we're gonna do the calipers here next. Uh, I'm probably gonna hitch up on the other side. My phone's about to die, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this side. And when I get to the brakes on the other side, you'll get to see that movie magic. I mean, it took like what a half a second for me to do this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna slide this on. I'm gonna get that first bolt in the top. 
scratch that we're not going to put that on yet like i did the other side because the other side is done we're going to actually i haven't done i didn't do this in my last brake job video we're going to take brake cleaner and we're going to spray it and wipe it down to get the excess uh shipping grease that's on it grease from your hands grease from everything we're going to spray the backside you're wondering how do we get the backside well spray it and spin it at the same time then take your towel hold it and spin it and you'll be able to get the backside wiped off as well there fresh and clean i've been told by a lot of mechanics that by leaving that grease on there it can actually soak into your pads it can cause it to not stop correctly till it dries out or it can soften your pads and they can break up and they can wear down a lot faster so you don't want to get the grease on your pads or this grease to get on your pads okay so now we're going to take this flip it up and do like i said all right uh check whatever your specs are on your torque make sure everything's torqued correctly and tightened really really good uh now all i got left is put the wheel on and this job is complete uh please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already oh and the on, and the last thing is when you start it up pump your brakes a few times what that'll do is that'll engage the brakes make them squeeze down onto your uh uh uh, new setup because if you don't what's gonna happen is you when you go to pull out for the first time You're gonna hit the brakes and they're gonna feel real squishy So pump them a few times that way it gets the uh, fluid back in there and they get to back to where they're supposed to be So please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Sorry. I didn't get time to get on the uh, On the Ranger this weekend, but this was very important. We got a really special surprise if all goes through Oh my god, this is like one of my wife's dreams that we're gonna try to make come true We'll find out tomorrow. You guys will find out next weekend. So, uh, again, thumbs up. Uh, new surprises all the time. And, uh, I don't know, comment below, subscribe. There's all kinds of stuff on my channel. If you want to learn how to do something, you're pretty much in the right spot. Uh, if I don't know how to do it, then I can direct you somewhere where you might be able to go. Um, uh, I'm not a mechanic. I never claimed to be a mechanic. I'm just a guy that likes to save money. <laughs> so, talk to you guys on the next video. Later. You out here now? What? I said, you're out here now? Yeah. Where's your mommy? In the house doing something. Okay. <laughs> so, give us some thumbs up and say bye.